We think because what's important to me isn't important to him, there's something wrong with him. He needs therapy. He needs to go to counseling. (laughs) There's something wrong. And women tend to take those things personal because he doesn't do it the way I would do it. I take that as a personal hit to me when it is not. He's a man, you're a woman. We're very, very different. And I think a lot of times we forget just how opposite yeah. men and women are. So yeah. we, we've got to give some room for that, some yeah. some cush yeah. for that. Welcome to the Danielle Hage podcast with Danielle Hage. I'm your co-host, Danielle Hage. Danielle is my mother-in-law and Nini to my three girls. She's a pastor, speaker, and founder of Dynamic Traits. She has 40 years experience in family and marriage relationships. She's been married for 42 years to Steve Hage, who travels the world preaching the gospel. And together, they pastor a church in Laguna Niguel, California. So today, we are going to talk about what you can never, never expect from men. I think some of these might be surprising to you. We're going to talk about you can never expect a man to act like a woman, validate or define your identity, love you perfectly, provide something he's unable or willing to. Unwilling. 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 (laughs) Yes. And to be God. So these are five things we're going to go through today of what you can never expect from men and what that looks like in our day-to-day lives and our relationships. Yeah. Well, and I think that women don't even realize that they have this expectation. It's yeah. kind of a an unspoken thing. Right. Um, so, and these expectations are very unrealistic. They're, they're not reality. Yeah. So that first one, um, expecting men to act like women. And what I mean by that is especially when it comes to the way that a woman relates to her emotions is very different than a way the way a man relates to his emotions. So if we understand that, you, you we will be able to lower our expectation. A man relates to his feelings like he, he feels, um, men, let me say it this way, men don't trust feelings. Okay. Mm -hmm. They trust facts. They trust, um, they're more about what they value, what they stand for, what they're into rather than how do you feel. But a woman will want a man to share his feelings because we somehow think I'll get to know him better if he can tell me how he feels because our feelings are so important to us. Like for a woman, like whatever our feelings are telling us, that's truth. Even if it's completely untrue. And our feelings don't always tell us the truth. You know, I heard someone say, feelings make terrible leaders. Yeah. You know, they have no intellect. They're just feelings. That, yeah. You know, and women are emotional. Yeah. Because of hormones, we are very emotional. So men aren't so much. And again, if he's more on his female side, he will be more of an emotional man. When he's on right. his male side, he's more detached. Yeah. So, um, so especially when it comes to feelings, the way he relates to them, he even feels them differently in his body mm. than a woman does. Yeah. So for a man, he feels his feelings like in his upper chest. Like when he's feeling good, his chest is yeah, bowed out. Right. When men are excited, like they're at a ball game. Yeah, you know, there's they're a physical high- relationship to their feelings. Exactly. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. high-fiving each other. When they're feeling good and they're excited, you know, chest bumps and <laughs> fist bumps, right? They're, they're excited. Yeah. They're ho, yeah. ho, ho. Rarely do you see women doing that. Women right. don't greet each other with chest bumps. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. We kind of feel our feelings like down here, like in our gut. It's just yeah. a little bit different. Yeah. So, um, or expecting men to um, play with the children the way a woman would, or yeah. to make the bed the way a woman right. would, or to load the dishwasher right. a way a woman would. Yeah. It's like we, you know, and those things are, those are great conversation starters oh, for, absolutely. for couples because- if you went into marriage without talking at first about this is what I expect you uh, from you as a husband because this is what my dad yeah. did in our household. Yeah. You know, my dad did the yard work. My mom did the indoor stuff. Yeah. So us girls being raised, we always did the indoor stuff. Yeah. The brothers did the outdoor stuff. I think there's some of those expectations. Yes, you can go into marriage, like the big rocks, the big values, right? That you're going to have those conversations before getting married. Um, like, are we going to raise our children in church, or where are we going to put them in school? Are they going private to be pub- or public? Right, homeschool. Or homeschool. Yes. yes, all of that. Will the will one work and one right. not work, or will right. we both be working? What's the expectations? I think those are big value conversations yes. that we realize what our expectations are and how we were raised and our thoughts around right. that. But I think there's so many little daily expectations that we yes. don't even realize are in who we are and how we were raised. Absolutely, that we do bring into conversation and relationship. 
and especially come out once we have children. Like you brought up even how the husbands play with your children. You know, I've heard that recently and as some of our kids are getting a little bit older and the dads will be a little bit more rough. roughhouse. And it makes the wife feel <laughs> unsafe yes. and nervous and he too thinks harsh. he's yeah. doing something wrong. Yes. When actually there's research out there to show why. That it's really that, good yeah, for dads to wrestle with the boys. it's actually really yeah. good. But um, those little expectations, I mean, we've had to re-clarify expectations like this around who's cooking dinner, who's planning dinner, and what seasons that looks like. Christian really loves to cook, and he really loves to plan what we're going to eat. But if it's a busy season at work, then that expectation comes back over to my plate, and that's my responsibility. But even what dinner time looks like, he was raised more having dinners every night together around the table. I was not as much because I had a dad who worked overnight. So we kind of blended that together, but it still was a conversation. Right. They had and to have. And re-clarifying, especially now that we, you know, uh, we've had phones for a while, but just the phone usage and our kids have, yeah. you know, devices now. It's like, okay, when we are a couple times a week around the table together having a family meal, what is that expectation? Right. Our current right. expectation is that phones are off the table. We're having conversation and everybody's sitting there together. But if it's a night where everybody's just kind of coming in and grabbing their own thing and I'm coming home late from dance or whatever with one of my children— then the expectation's a little bit different. Right. And I think the reason this is so important to talk about expectations is because so much pain and hurt and disappointment yeah. come from unmet expectations. Yeah. This is what I expect, and you're not doing your part. Yeah. You're not doing it. When your partner may not even understand what your expectation was. Yeah. And you said something earlier oh that gosh. the space between expectation and reality is Disappointment. Massive disappointment. <laughs> Massive disappointment. And what you talked Big about, space. how where women hold their feelings and feel their feelings, women do hold on to their feelings. Yeah. So that's when you start feeling not good, right? Having body ailments. When you're keeping that in it's and you're not true. being realistic with your reality right. and the unspoken or even the spoken expectations that you have, but realizing you're living in that space of right. disappointment. Right. Okay. So um, so that's the first one, expecting men to act more like women. We yeah. think because he, what's important to me isn't important to him, there's something wrong with him. Yeah, He needs therapy. He needs to go to counseling. <laughs> there's something wrong. And women tend to take those things personal mm -hmm. because he doesn't do it the way I would do it. I take that as a personal hit to me when it is not. He's a man, you're a woman. We're very, very different. And I think a lot of times we forget just how opposite yeah. men and women are. So yeah. we, we've got to give some room for that, some, yeah. some cush yeah. for that. Um, so the second one is yeah. expecting a man to define you. Is that yeah. what we said? Define, define your identity, your, identity yeah. your, your value, putting too much credence in the man that you're married to. Okay, mm -hmm. he is not God. <laughs> okay, he is a... a finite, imperfect, fallible human being as we are. Yeah. Okay. So he's not gonna he's not gonna do everything right, everything exactly the way that you want him to do it. Don't ever, ever empower anybody, not just your spouse, but anybody to define who you are. Okay. There's one person who defines our true identity, and that is God. Okay. Yeah. And nobody here on earth is God. So we've got to quit looking to that to be validated. Mm -hmm. Because when a woman desperately needs a man to validate her, she, again, she's not going to be her true self. She's yeah. not going to be her, her authentic self. She's going to give up too much of who she really is trying to win that whoever you're yeah. looking to to validate you, their approval or their, um, Oh, yeah, their validation of you. Yeah. And we just have to remember that we are already complete. We are already validated. Yeah. Our husband doesn't complete us. And I know the Jerry Maguire movie, You Complete <laughs> yeah. Me, is so that's yeah. all that's so romantic and women love that, but it's false. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nobody completes you. You're already mm -hmm. complete in him. He, Jesus is the completer. Yeah. Okay. So quit looking to people yeah. for that. Yeah. And what like, you know, what a I don't know. I just think of like monkey bars. If you're going from like validation from validation to validation, and that's yeah. what you're hanging on, yeah, waiting for that next right. word of validation or that next intimate moment of validation, right. like, you know, how 
I've, I've been in seasons like that, yeah. you know, where especially after having kids, your identi- identity kind of gets wobbled. And if you're just hanging on to right. what your husband notices and revalidating how much he loves you and still right. attracted to you, yeah. um, that can be a lonely place to be. Yeah. So, and I think what we do a lot of times is we hold them accountable. We hold our yeah. husbands accountable, our children, our parents, our friends to make us feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. And then because they bring us joy and they bring us safety and they bring us peace. And so then we get to that point where pretty soon we don't even know we're doing it, but we're demanding, we're expecting, make me feel the way I need to feel. And it's not their responsibility. That We can't hold them to account for that, okay? Um, Our state of being, our state of peace, Mm -hmm. our state of happiness, the way that we see ourselves, that is all based on what the Bible says about us, right. that we are perfect, complete, lacking nothing. A lot of people don't believe that, Yeah. okay? But but that is the truth. So we've got to get to that place mm-hmm. where we believe the truth yeah. about ourselves. Yeah. And we don't look to people to tell yeah. us the truth. We look to God. And you've even talked about in our conversations about attraction, you know, when we do feel validated, when we are our authentic selves because we truly understand yeah. our true identity and believe it. Right. We're actually that much more attractive. Right, right. to our husbands. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Because I think, you know, that the next one that you should never expect yeah. um from a man is for him to love you perfectly. Yeah. Okay? So we've, we've kind of hit on that a little bit, but again, he is n- even on his best day, okay? He's doing the best he can, mm-hmm. but even on his best day, he's not going to love you perfectly. Yeah. Because again, he's he's imperfect. He's flawed, like right. all of us. But he's got to do his best. So if we choose to look at our husbands as they're doing the best they can, yeah, yeah, I need to be his helpmate, and I need to share what I need, how I'm feeling, right. so that he has a better understanding of me. Yeah. But he's really doing the best he can. And I think sometimes um, couples can get into this standstill where you mm-hmm. think you're doing that on purpose. You're not. You're hurting me on purpose. Mm. Which no man yeah, wants you're to hurt a woman something on purpose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on purpose. Yeah. I mean, if he's a normal, healthy. Yeah, we're human talking being, about healthy. Yes, <laughs> there's some unhealthy healthy people male. out there. Yeah, absolutely, who are dysfunctional and who are vindictive, or vindictive, and maybe do want to yeah. hurt women. Yeah. But hopefully, you're not married to one of those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you are, um, you may want to take a second look at that relationship because that is not how life or relationships are supposed to be. But, um, you know, we all need to do our own personal work. You yeah. know, we all need to have our own personal growth and do whatever it takes to get to the place where we are healthy, where we can really see people for who they are and not yeah. have this clouded, distorted vision because we're holding right. offenses, or we're holding grievances, and we're yeah. unwilling to forgive. Anybody that's been married any amount of time from day one to whenever, you are going to have to factor in forgiveness <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. in your relationship. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. And you're going to do it over and over and over right. again. <laughs> because what are some of the ways that we as women expect men to love us perfectly? Like, what does that look like? He should read my mind. Yeah. He should just know. He should he should do it the way I would do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and because if he's not, then something's wrong with him. Mm-hmm. So there's all kinds of things. He should know without me having to ask that the trash needs to be emptied. Yeah. He should know that my car needs to be cleaned. Mm. It's an outside thing, right? Yeah. And yeah. I know lots of women get their own cars cleaned. I've been spoiled. My husband gets my car washed and he puts gas in my tank. I don't ever have to do that, <laughs> except if he's traveling. And then I'll call him and I'll say, I filled up my tank today. You're slipping. And that's just <laughs> an inside joke yeah. between us. Yeah. And he'll go, oh, shoot, I didn't fill up before I left, which I, I don't expect that at all. He just does that yeah. because he's a sweet guy. <laughs> yeah. But because you don't expect it, you're able to receive it as a gift. A good, and there's gratitude. Very good. That's one of the things you taught yes. me early on was if we really can let go of some of our expectations. Yeah. And I mean, I wrestled with this for years, for years, because you would say, have no expectations and then you can receive everything as a gift. Yeah. And be thankful for it. And you're it. like, is that even possible? <laughs> if you have expectations, then you're obligated to it. Right. And it's just a demand. Right. And that's where you become the naggy wife. Right. And then you know, it can, and then if you expect it and it becomes an obligation, it becomes work, it becomes a yeah. chore yeah. to make you feel good, yeah. then it's no fun. It's yeah. no fun for yeah. him. But if we look at every little thing he does yeah. as a gift, we just have to shift our perspective mm-hmm. as a gift. He washes a dish or he makes a bed. 
thank you. Oh my yeah. gosh. Thanks so much. It doesn't mean you have to fall down on the floor, have sex with them. It means just a smile, just, just a smiling quick, and yeah. saying, that yeah. does so much for me. I mm-hmm. so appreciate that. Yeah. Guess what you're going to get from him? You're going to get more. But we women think if we criticize, if we point out what he's doing wrong, that'll motivate him to yeah. do what we want. And it doesn't. It that. All that does is it causes him to back up and distance himself yeah. because he feels like he's not enough. He yeah. feels like he can't win with you. Right. And men are motivated by winning, yeah. by success, not by failing, okay? Mm-hmm. So if he feels like you're upset, when men are around upset women, all they want to do is if they can't fix it, if he can't make you happy, yeah. he wants to run away to his cave. Right, right. It's, it's like I— And men, they can feel that expectation checklist that we have. Yeah, I you think know, so. like, are you— are you living up to that yeah. standard, you know? But yeah. when so, we can receive it as a gift, we can be grateful for absolutely. it. Absolutely. So yeah. Just know he's not going to do it perfect. But if we can have that perspective, you know what? He's doing the best he can. Let's leave it at that. He's doing the best he can. Or have a conversation about it. Absolutely. That's another thing I learned too is that there's certain expectations that we've had in seasons, but then seasons shift. Right. And we have to have a and we have to be aware of it. We have to have the conversation. Recently, um, I brought up to Christian, hey. I know you're working a lot. There's, you know, there's things going on. And would do you need me to pick back up the laundry and take care of that? Because Christian does like to, or I don't know if he likes to do the laundry, but he does the laundry. <laughs> I think he does like it. <laughs> I don't know. It's because he does it the right he way. Like, he prefers his way of doing it. I don't do it, it the right way. So. <laughs> but I noticed he wasn't on his rhythm that he typically is on. Okay. So just renegotiating the yes. season. Hey, I see what you're doing over here. You're putting in longer hours. Do we need to renegotiate this expectation? Because I don't want to have this unspoken expectation right. and then be upset when, you know, X, Y, and Z isn't washed by exactly. the end of the week when we need it. Exactly. So and that's a constant in a marriage. You're always renegotiating things Absolutely. again because yeah. we're always growing and moving. Kids yeah. are ages are changing, sports are changing, yeah. demands are changing. I know when Steve and I early on uh, first got married, I was really good with money and I was mm-hmm. really good at balancing the checkbook. So I paid the bills. I yeah. balanced the checkbook. I had learned mm-hmm. that. And he was like, great. Yeah, you take it. Yeah. And then there came a time, I think, you know, I had a couple kids. I think I went back to work part-time and it was too much. And I told him, I said, I, I got to give something up. I said, I can't. I think, do you want to just take the checkbook. And he was like, sure, absolutely. So then he, that became his responsibility. And now I never got that back. (laughs) He's been doing it uh, the rest of our marriage, which which is fine. But I think that is a constant in marriage where you, you have to renegotiate. You have to have conversations. You can, you can accept something, you can reject something, or you can negotiate something. Okay. So, and in that negotiation, that's where you have to be able to tell each other your needs. This is what I need. Yeah to be at peace. This is what I need to feel safe. This is what I need to get a break, (laughs) you know, whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. And not be too in our feelings about it. Yes. And because women will put so much credence in their feelings, even to the point where their feelings are allowed to trump the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's not good because our feelings don't always tell us the truth. Remember, they don't make good leaders. We can't just be like a, a pig with a ringing their snout, being led around by our feelings. We've got to stop and we have to examine the thought that gave us the feeling to begin with and ask ourselves, is that true? Well, you know, he doesn't respect me because he's not. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Does he really not respect you because he's not folding the laundry right? Yeah. Or the way you would want it folded? Right. Is that true? Can you absolutely know that's true? Yeah. And nine times out of 10, you'll be, I can't absolutely know it's true. Or give me some evidence of that truth. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to examine. And you know, the Bible says, uh, take captive your thoughts. Yeah. Do you know that um, research has shown that between the average person thinks between 50 and 70,000 thoughts a day? That's a lot That's of thinking. A lot of That's a <laughs> lot of thoughts. And now here's the, the catch. Research shows that 80% of the thoughts we think are negative. Yeah. 80%. Wow. That's eight out of 10 thoughts are negative. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to catch ourselves. We got to yeah. take those thoughts captive, yeah. e- examine them, explore right. them. Is that real? Is that just a thought that mm-hmm. popped into my head? Is it even real? Yeah. We, and if you can you, start making up a whole all separate kinds of stories, yeah. all, all kinds of when you attach to your thoughts, yeah. you believe in your thoughts, thinking they're real without asking questions. Yeah. Wait a minute. We're having the conversation, the argument that. before they even get home and enter the conversation <laughs> in themselves. The yeah. yeah. 
Absolutely. Okay, so the next one we want to talk about is a big one, I think, and this is something you've really um, helped me through, is providing something he's unable or unwilling to provide. Right. right. Men have a lot that they want to provide. Mm -hmm. Okay, they have all kinds of things that they want to provide, that they want to give you, that they want to do for you. But there may come a time when there's some things that you're wanting or asking for that he's either he can't, it's not within his wheelhouse, um, it maybe it's not within his earning power. Like if you're going into a relationship saying, you know, so my dream is the big house on the beach with the Mercedes in the garage, and I I like diamonds. Did I mention I like jewelry? Yeah. And I want to have this many kids and blah blah blah. And and he his job is he, maybe he's is. a school yeah, teacher yeah. or or something that he's yeah. just never going to have that kind of income that's going to provide that. That would say that he's the wrong guy for you. Number one. <laughs> Before you get married, you know, if that's what your expectation is, he's probably not going to be able to provide that. Mm-hmm. And then there's some cases where a man is, there's something we want, but he's unwilling. Um, there was a man and this woman. I knew the man better than I knew the woman. They started dating. He was very attracted to her, very mm-hmm. into her. She's a very smart lady. And they were dating and things were going okay. And then she and I sat down one time and she said, you know, um, I hardly ever see him. I don't even know if we're actually dating. Mm. I only really see him like once a month. She goes, and my girlfriends are saying that he's not your boyfriend. You see the guy once a month? Are you even dating? And I said, and I knowing him and knowing what she was expecting, she wanted more, okay? Because she really mm. liked him. And I said, you know what? Um, sometimes women want things that men either can't provide. She goes, he makes his own schedule. She goes, I know what he does. He has a lot of free time. He makes his own schedule. I said, or... He's unwilling to provide. (laughs) And if a man doesn't want to spend time with a woman, he might, he probably was um, physically attracted to her, but not emotionally attracted. So he doesn't want to get to know her better. He doesn't want to spend a lot of time with her. And I said, and she didn't like that. When I told her, I said, sorry, but he probably isn't that into you. And I know that sounds harsh, but I would rather know. Up front, yeah. in the beginning of a relationship, if a man's really into me yeah. or not, why am I going to waste my time? Right. Right. And right. that's what women are most concerned about is wasting their time, yeah. especially if they're in their childbearing years mm-hmm. and they yeah. want to have kids. And so she didn't like that. But you know what? She broke up with them. Yeah. And he really wasn't into her. He yeah. went off and married somebody else mm-hmm. later on. So I think women wanting things, needing things that a man is unwilling to provide, you got to find out what it is he is is willing to provide. Yeah, I think that's good, especially in today's society. I mean, we've d- we talked a little little bit about it that space between expectation and reality. Mm-hmm. But with Instagram and you're seeing people's highlight reels, I mean, to be frank, I thought by this age we would have a certain home and live in a certain place and be able to provide this and that and the other. Right. And we're in a little bit different of a season, maybe, than my expectations. Right. So I have to put that in check quite often, my yeah. my disappointment. And it's not like he's uh, disregarding my feelings right. about what I would like. He knows my desires and in work, working towards them. And it's not that he's unwilling, but he's unwilling at the moment because he's working towards these goals. Again, right. just constant conversation. Right. And being realistic about where we really are and what we're comparing ourselves to. Yeah. And I think comparison, and I can— mm, it's a trap. You, you get on social media, and, oh you, gosh. and you're right. Everybody is yeah. only posting the great things, their, yeah. the highlights yeah. of their life. And we do start to compare, p- compare and that is a slippery slope. Yeah. I mean, a I've been on there before. Discontentment. Yes. I remember seeing something um, about this young couple's church. They had just started, and they'd started after we had started ours and all the stuff that was going on. I immediately started to compare, and I was yeah. so bummed right. out. And then I, I remember, and it was like in the middle of the night, one of those nights you can't sleep. So I mm-hmm. get my phone out, start looking. That was a mistake, yeah. <laughs> big yeah. mistake. And the next morning I woke up in a bad mood mm-hmm. because I thought everybody's doing better than us. Right. Everybody's doing better yeah. than us. Yeah. Not everybody's doing better than you. Right. You're just seeing the best of what they're doing. Right. So, And you know, the Bible talks about that. It warns us not mm-hmm. to compare because what we do is we either compare ourselves to someone who's doing better and then we feel like crap, or yeah. we compare ourselves to somebody who's doing worse. Mm-hmm. And then it just puffs us up. feel bigger. Puffs yeah. us up with pride. Yeah. Both are lose-lose. Okay, yeah. neither yeah. one of those are good. Um, this is the other thing about, you know, because men are geared toward 
being protectors and providers. And a conversation we had last time I was here, mm-hmm. if it's okay if I yeah, share please. this, I, <laughs> you probably know where I'm going with this. But um, you had said, you know, I really want to get our backyard, you know, nice. in shape because yeah. there's mud and we want to plant grass and this and that. And we've got to get our backyard fixed up. And her husband, my son, was saying, I said, well, why, Christian, why won't you? I mean, yeah. this is really, really important to Danielle. And yes, I'm being the interfering mother-in-law. I'm like, why? What do you, what's the hold up there? And the way he explained it to me, he said, you know what? Right now, my goal is to get us out of debt. Yeah. He said, and I'm doing really good. I'm making strides yeah. doing that. He goes, the backyard's going to have to wait. A man's instinct to protect, protect his finances, yeah will override his instinct to provide. Yep. He wants you to have what yep. you want. And I could tell because even that day when we came home, we went into the back- backyard and immediately he started to say, Problem you know, solving. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I thought, oh, like he yep. heard me. He heard you. Yeah. Like yeah. he knows he needs to get that backyard yep. fixed. He goes, eventually this is where I'm going. Yep. So he's thinking about it, Yeah. but he needs to He's going to get out of debt first. Right. And I admired that. Yeah. I thought that's very respectable. But if you guys never talked about it, then you'd be thinking, or when is this going to get down? feelings <laughs> trump thinking. Yes. You know, like we have to ask him, what are you thinking about this? And it does, it, it makes my feelings feel better, yeah. <laughs> you know, as a woman. Yeah. yeah. But I can't push my feelings to the point where it overtakes yeah. his logical need to provide and protect. Right. Where they're the most important thing. Yeah. My feelings yeah. win out. Yeah. Yeah. And we're always going to have feelings. But guess what? Feelings come and go. Yeah. You're going to feel this way today and tomorrow it's going to change. Or in an hour right. it's going to change. Right. That's why we can't put too much credence mm-hmm. on all the little feelings that we feel. Yeah. And depending on your time of the month, you're going to feel very differently. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, even in that cir- circumstance, I had to ask myself like, okay, so if I feel so strongly about this, I need to get out there and start pulling the weeds and doing it myself and planting the flowers. And it's right. like, oh, I get busy and this and that. And right. Like, All right. That's well, good. Then we. That's good. We're good. You know, if so. it's that important to you, yeah. do it yourself. You just do it yourself. Yeah. yeah. And that's where Christian has, that's where we've negotiated some things. Yeah. There are some things that are important to him in certain ways that just how we Aren't clean the you? house, how we pick up the house, all of that. So it's just, right. okay, if I care about it that much, I'll just do it myself. Right, right. Yeah. I think the most dangerous thing in a marriage is when you stop negotiating, you stop problem yeah. solving, you stop trying to resolve conflict where you just give up yeah. and you just and then you just let it brew mm-hmm. and simmer and yeah. you hold it all down and then it explodes in a very unattractive yeah. way. So you got to keep talking. Talk until you get to the result. Yeah. I can remember we this doesn't happen as much anymore and maybe because we've been married so long now and kids are all gone and maybe life's a little bit slower, easier for us. But I remember when Steve and I, ooh, we would get into some doozies where I just, we could not see eye to eye. And we go around and around and around and be so angry. But I remember we would sit there until we came to a resolve. Yes. And it's funny how suddenly sometimes if you hang in there, now if it gets escalated to the point where you're, where it's, you're going to get violent. Okay. You got to yeah, take time and walk away mm-hmm. for sure. But I remember one time we were in the car, in the driveway, came home and all the way home, we're argu- arguing. And all of a sudden, I don't even know what happened. All of a sudden, either I re- deferred to him or he deferred to me and went, okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was done. I can't even tell you. It yeah. almost seems like it was like a spiritual well, or thing. Or even it almost, fi- you know, finding the root of it. Yeah. You know, so I think we're never going to be 100% be on the same page with expectations right. just because we were all raised differently. We've right. all got different, you know, whatever. But um, but like you're saying, sitting there, having the conversation and finding out what the root of it really yes. is. Yes. And then reflecting with one another. Christian's really good at helping me see the truth in reality. You know, if I'm disgruntled about like, oh, I just really want to redo the bathroom. I really want to redo the the backyard. And I just, I don't like it. I, you know, this is how I feel about it. And he can help hold up the mirror and say, but the reality is, this is what you, this is the home you prayed for two seasons ago, two houses ago. You know, you would look at houses like this and say, oh, I wish we could live in this kind of a neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. These beautiful trees and, you know, and and so just being able to hold each other and really find the root of why you're brewing up this expectation and disappointment and that rat race in life. And I think what you just said, you hit on something that is so, so important is being grateful for yeah. what you have and reminding 
oh my gosh, we're actually in the house I prayed for. Now I'm finding all the things wrong with it that yeah. need to be fixed, <laughs> right? <laughs> and moving but, on to the next uh-huh. house. Yeah. But but stopping and and f- taking a moment, yeah. maybe even writing down, here's what I am so grateful for. Mm-hmm. That's so huge. Yeah. Just, you know, there's the, at least we have a house. At yeah. least we are able to um, provide this for our children. Yeah. Dance lessons, pickleball lessons, yeah. whatever it is that yeah. they're into. Think about all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Rather mm-hmm. than getting on that downward death spiral, spiral of all the negative, there's yeah. always going to be negative. But remind yourself, look at the good stuff that we're doing. Yeah. Look yeah. at all the good in our life. That's yeah. key. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. I just don't, I don't think we realize how big expectations yeah. and unmet expectations are right. on a daily basis in right. our relationship. So the last thing we just want to talk about is we can't expect him to be God. That's right. He is not God. <laughs> and I think women kind of sometimes look at their man, look at their relationship to save them. And that we make we make our husbands into small G gods. And ladies, that's idolatry. Okay. He is never going to be God. He's never going to do it perfectly. He's a human being. And guess what? We are never going to do it perfectly either. We are never going to meet his needs perfectly. But I think just being aware, you know, when you become aware, when you become self-aware and conscious of what's real, yeah, all the good in your life, then change happens naturally. Yeah. Like even for Christian t- that day to walk out in the backyard, just start talking about his vision for it. Yeah. Like he didn't probably even want to talk about it because it's too much pressure because he can't afford to do it. But mm-hmm. I just thought in his mind, it brought to his awareness that, or to our, your awareness even, mm-hmm. he's actually thinking about it. Yeah. He wants it fixed up too. Right. And I think that's good. And it just makes you be able to kind of come together as like, we are on the same page, but we got to talk about it yeah. to make sure we get on the same yeah. page. But yeah, he's not... He, and, you know, none of us can ever love perfectly. None of us mm-hmm. can. Um, we have to remember that love holds no record of wrongs, okay? Mm-hmm. Love doesn't expect anything in return. So we do our best to love the way that we are taught by God to love. Yeah. And we believe that our spouse is doing their best. We yeah. believe the best yeah. in one another. Yes. I think that's huge. Yeah, that's a muscle to work out. Yes. I find that when I'm putting my husband in the place of God— a lot of fear creeps in. Ooh. And that's when I can yeah. I have to re reevaluate. And that's always been for me, it's uh been in seasons of provision right. and and leaps and leaps of faith when it comes around that jobs or where's right. our next paycheck gonna come from or all that. And just again, getting the words out and not holding yeah. them in. Yeah. Um, but realizing, oh my gosh, I'm holding you to the standard of God. God is our provider. Right. He's our protector, ultimately. Right. ultimately. And I know he, yes. he put that in you as the husband and leader of our home. Right. But when I just put that onus on him and become critical and what's your plan, what are you going to figure out and not okay with the answers that are coming back at me, yeah. then I need to take a step back and realize, yeah. okay, God is ultimately, and just pray, God, he's your son. That's he's right. He's not my son. Right. I'm not his mom. Right. That's right. <laughs> I'm, I don't get to take that place, you know? And right. I, I don't want to be the critical, naggy one in his life. So God, he's your son. I believe that he hears from you. And That's I know right. you guys have been in those seasons too, Absolutely. just speaking that out. Or not even speaking it out, but just praying it. Yeah. Like, he will hear from you. Right. I don't need to have all the answers. He may not have all the answers right now, but God's perfect timing. Right. It's like we, be okay with there have been times where I don't trust my husband mm. with the decisions he's making. Yeah, you've said that. But I trust the God in him. Yeah. And so a lot of times it's just like, okay, you're the leader. Either I'm going to buck it and fight it, or I'm going to say, you know what, honey, I trust you to do what's best for our marriage and our family. So whatever you decide. And when I put that on him, give that to him, yeah. he comes back and goes, oh, okay, so what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Right? Like, wow, that's a big load to carry. If I'm saying I'm totally trusting you and trusting the God in you, it makes them kind of rethink things. Okay, I want to do this right. So we've had had that many times over 42 years. (laughs) That's good. Okay, so today we've talked about expectations of men. What you can can never never expect. (laughs) Expect from them. The five different things we can never expect from them. And just talking about expectation versus reality. And receiving things as a gift, not being obligated. Uh, We've covered a lot. This has been so 
powerful, impactful. So thank you for that. And if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when a new episode is coming to you. And it helps us if you leave a comment or any questions you have. And we'll bring you new episodes as often as we can. Make sure you check out Daniil on Instagram and Facebook.